This is May 21st, 2015. And back at the end of December, um, I had posted an article on eMediaPress.com about Bob Sewell and this uh, Popular Mechanics article back in the 50s where he uh, converted this uh, 1947 Crosley station wagon uh, into an electric car using an aircraft starter motor as the uh, motor. Um, but what's unusual about it, especially for this time, is that it was a regenerative system where if it was rolling down a hill, then the uh, motor, of course, becomes a generator, which in turn recharges its own batteries. And uh, uh, amazingly, uh, Bob uh, lived across the street from me, and uh, and uh, I'm here with uh, Donald Sewell of uh, SewellScenics.com. SewellScenics.com. And that's uh, S E W E L L Scenics.com. And uh, uh, Donald Sewell is uh, Bob Sewell's son who is uh, renovating the uh, uh, Bob's house and uh, here's you know through kind of an interesting string of coincidences wound up finding out that there is a quite a bit of this old um, electronics equipment and a lot of it is in really good shape and uh, so it, can you tell us anything about this electric car that might not be in the article or how that kind of came about mm. uh... The only thing that was an interesting story was one of his college buddies that came to his memorial service told me that the only time they'd ever been in a car and my dad had burned rubber, uh -huh. it was that electric car. <laughs> Which I just found amazing because uh -huh. he was notorious for just going snail slow. So for him right, to have yeah. an electric car, but I mean he uh -huh. was showing off on the University of Idaho campus and right. that thing had enough torque it'd peel, peel rubber. So I thought that was kind of a funny uh, funny story, but uh, I, I never did find. We thought maybe we would find that motor someplace uh -huh. here, but we never, never came across it in the stuff. I thought he had it pigeonholed, or maybe we threw it out by accident, not knowing what it was. Uh -huh. I'm hopeful that's not the case, but right. we did look for it, that aircraft, uh -huh. and then I never did find it. But uh, right. he uh, he loved collecting <laughs> and being an electrical engineer of electronics. He loved ham radio. And, uh -huh. All this stuff was basically accumulated over, you know, 50, 60 years. Right. So, it, like you said, it represents a lot of uh, vintage uh -huh. uh, type stuff. But uh, so, so after University of Idaho, what, um, he had worked with. A, he was recruited by General Electric yeah, he was and by General Electric, uh, General Telephone, and Washington Water Power, a company uh -huh. at that time. And he went to work for Washington Water Power, which is now Vista. Which is now Vista, correct? Uh -huh. And he was uh, there for thirty. 35 years before he took early retirement. Mm -hmm. So he was retired for 20, 20 some years, and that, mm -hmm. you know, he d didn't really pursue this hobby after that, which was what I thought he would do. But mm -hmm. um, he was, uh, in the heyday, he was the electric, uh, he was superintendent of electric underground and water for Spokane and Avista. All the, under, all the underground power. passageways so all, and stuff? All and, the underground uh -huh. electric and water downtown. That uh -huh. was his district. So when Exposition 74 was here in, in Spokane, uh -huh. right. that was, he was in charge of all the interface for all the electrical, all the remodel went on downtown. There was demolition. Mm -hmm. Lots of buildings were torn down, mm -hmm. uh, refurbished for the ex exposition, the whole site. So when Expo uh, got done and went away, he... He basically took all the, you know, the building materials, the wire, mm -hmm. whatever they were going to scrap, he hauled here, mm -hmm. and then we ended up building, you know, part of the house with some of that stuff. Oh, wow, okay. So he was, he was mm -hmm. a collector. He liked, uh, nothing went to waste. If you had something right. on, that looked useful, he took it. Uh -huh. So he was kind of that, but ingenious, just, I found stuff, I'm just like, I don't know how he had the time and patience to put stuff together, but just building things out of available materials. Mm -hmm. it, did, it, you know, it looked patched together, but it was functional, but right. he, that's how he was. It was like, well, I'll take that and this, and he could formulate something in his head and build stuff that, you know, the rest right. of us just have to go buy. Right, stuff. right. So uh, pretty, pretty amazing, but... Uh, huh. Now, uh, one of the times I was chatting with him uh, over at Jerry's house next door at one of the neighborhood ice cream parties, yep. uh, he told me... Um, he had a uh, patent or developed some type of sticker coating system for the high voltage lines and the transformers called Correct. Teltap. Teltap. Yeah. Teltap. So, and what is that about? It was basically a uh, visual indicator to put on the transmission uh, on the transformers and the uh, voltage regulators, so that the lineman could see from the ground what 
what the voltage steps were at the, at those units. Okay. It wasn't uh, a meter per se. It was mm -hmm. just a go no go type mm -hmm. deal. But those stickers were visible from the ground. Right. Uh, and then the the guys knew what voltages they were dealing with and you know what cutouts they could go to and stuff. And our very first house was over near Franklin Park, and he tested those. He did freeze and heating tests on those when he did that patent product at that house. He used my mom's oven uh -huh. to cook them to make sure they could withstand high temperature. Okay. And then he had them in the freezer uh -huh. to make sure they could withstand winter. So right. he did all that testing stuff just right, right there in our old, you know, little two bedroom house over on Columbia. So that was kind of a... So there were stickers that actually applied to the transformers? The, yes. Uh -huh. um, I might be able to actually find... I, I know I have some. I might have some here. Mm. If you want to see it, yeah, no, that'd be cool. Um, you want to pause it and I'll go look, or yeah, oh, we can look at that later. Okay, yeah, if you happen to I come think across I have it, some, so yeah. If not, I have them at home. Right, it'd be cool. I just give you a set of them, so you've got them for reference. Yeah. For now, what was were those used around Spokane with Washington Water yeah, Power? Yeah, I don't know and... how far out in the distribution uh -huh. area they actually ended up getting used. Uh huh. Uh, I'm not sure about that because that was, you know, early '60s, and I was. I was just an infant at the time, so I right. don't know what their uh -huh. distribution was. They were they were uh, produced locally uh -huh. uh, by one of the vinyl sticker guys, so it was a local product, local patent. But I don't know. I'm not sure what the reach was. Right. He talked about it in his his intro letter that the application was nationwide. So uh -huh. I just don't know if it got right. distributed out or not. So, so, so now with all this equipment, this was in one of the buildings next to the house, as yeah, part, part, a, kind of part of his lab. Yeah, he had a large uh, outbuilding shop. Uh, I think it's thirty by fifty, mm -hmm. and a lot of the stuff was out there. And then he had a working shop here in the basement of the house, uh, and a lot of the stuff was basically set up. And that's where his ham radio stuff used to be. Uh, mm -hmm. And like you said, it was a working lab. And mm -hmm. then over time, stuff just started getting stacked in front of things and you mm -hmm. couldn't get to the meters behind. So once we started unearthing all that stuff, this stuff was all basically, it's like a time capsule. You just pulled stuff mm -hmm. back and stuff was all still plugged in and wired and, uh, you know, but I, I didn't know enough about it to know what worked or what it did or anything else. I'm sure he tried to explain it to me, but I, right. you know, was not, I was too young to be interested. Well, in that stuff, so. well, when I first walked in here and everything is nice and organized sitting on all these shelves, it was not but blew, blew me away. I yeah. mean, this is it is like walking into a time machine. Yeah, it was not yes. this neatly organized in his uh, area. Uh -huh. That's my expertise is organizing. So right. Just once. I mean, that was nice. Once you got it out, you could really see what you had. Because uh -huh. uh, I knew he had stuff buried back there, but you just didn't know the extent of it. Right. Maybe that was his. That was his uh, way of making sure that we didn't uh, take any of his real goodies. Yeah. He was so <laughs> cluttered, you know, that you couldn't figure out what it was. But. Right. Um, well, there's well, there's hundreds of pieces. Everything from, uh, you know, old old meters and stuff, old frequency counter meters, tubes, tube sockets. Yeah, I think there's uh, over solder probes. Two hundred and ten meter piece, equipment pieces. I think is uh -huh. what we counted. Out of, out of all the there's all these boxes, some test set radar, have all these meters, a whole library of books, old old scopes and uh, frequency counters and battery testers, these two rack units with some old uh, Navy equipment. I love this one, this medical, this b and ultra, Ultraviolet ray device. Yeah. I have a couple just, of these. That's just so vintage. I just love the, there's a couple meters too that have the old wood, yeah. the wood cases. Uh-huh. Which, you know, just. That's good for um, killing bacteria on cuts and stuff okay. and good yeah, skin. I, had, and <laughs> I had no idea. I don't know if it was for testing for radon or what the thing was, but it just. Looked vintage, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 A little bit of a little bit of cleanup and a lot of this stuff, you know, like this down here. I mean, this is right. just in pristine mm -hmm. shape. So he'll be he'd be excited knowing that we're we're it's being repurposed. It's going someplace good. Yeah, it'll be it'll be put to use, and keep I think it's good to to keep it all together in a collection. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a shame to have them parted out, and you know. Yeah, we didn't want to piecemeal it. That was yeah. our, our attempt was was try right. to find somebody that could just yeah. take the whole lot uh -huh. that understood what it what it was. Right and, and fortunately, it's just going across the street. Well, so <laughs> that's, that's okay. That helps. <laughs> right in there. But, okay. Yeah. So um, that's about all. 
Well, I know you're busy doing your remodeling and stuff, and so we'll, you know, get we'll get get, get, get to work and okay. And if we find more stuff, then we'll okay. we'll bring more yeah. stuff over. We've we've we think we've got it all, but we're you know. Yeah. Never... And if you find any of those tell tap stickers, that'd be kind of neat. I will um, look for those. I know I have. I'd like to I'd like to scan those in and put sure. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I'll do that because I know I know we, I found a box of them right, right. in his office, and we'll hook you up with those. So. Okay. Appreciate the time. All right. Well, yeah. thank you for your time. Okay. Done. Thank okay. You we'll be busy. Okay. okay. Oh, it's a ultraviolet ray device. Yeah. For uh, healing.